Welcome to your 4x4. We're exploring some of the best destinations just out of Melbourne with an epic five day road trip. And this is day three, exploring the Wombat State Forest just to the west of Melbourne. Your 4x4 is presented by Iveco, Trek, ARB, Cooper, Nava, Piranha, Boss Aluminium, Mike Coolman, and Patrol Apart, Navarra Apart. Nestled between the Lerderderg State Park and Wombat State Forest, the township of Blackwood sits on the Lerderderg River. Gold was first discovered in Blackwood at the start of 1855. By the end of the year, 13,000 prospectors were panning the river and sluicing its banks, eventually mining the hills and gullies surrounding the township. The biggest winds were made to the west of the town, and that's where you'll find some of the very best 4x4 tracks in the area. These days, the historical township offers excellent facilities, including the Blackwood Mineral Springs Caravan Park, where our journey is about to begin. Day three of five forests in five days, and here we are at Wombat State Forest. Andreas in the Mike Coleman car has been driving for the last couple of days, but Andreas' wife Lisa's here now. I only arrived yesterday night, so I'm really looking forward to the driving because I have a lot of driving experience as a little child on the tractor at home on our horse farm. I've taken over from McCliff and Jason using the same vehicle. Hopefully it stays together for that. Today we're joined by Mike and Dave in the White Rhino. Dave is a proud owner of that magnificent vehicle. I'm from Queensland. I came up with my brother Michael. This is my first time to get out and actually play with a rhino in the mud. This week we're hauling around the Trailmaster Pioneer. Let's go and take a quick look at what makes it a serious off-road trailer. Uniquely designed independent suspension gives us coils for comfort and plenty of articulation for the rough stuff. The DO35 is our secret weapon for off-roading. It's got the strength to take us anywhere and the articulation for the hardcore stuff. The finishing touch is the Australian-made rooftop tent from Boss Aluminium. It comes with a real mattress for the most comfortable night's sleep you've ever had. That leaves us ready for tonight and free to go willing today. Last couple of days we've had really good weather. It's been awesome. Today has been quite dreary, cloudy, rainy. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Blackwood. It's a beautiful day. Where are you, Simon? <laughs> I think it's Blackwood, South Australia. <laughs> The first announcement of the day is happy birthday to Maria. Happy day of birth, Maria. <laughs> happy birthday to you. What an epic start, straight onto Easter Monday track. Wombat is famous for mud holes, water crossings, fernery, a lot of rocks, a lot of slippery sections. And then there was a bit of rain started to come and I thought, oh, by Jingo, it's gonna be a cracker. Looks like a little bit of a mud hole ahead, should be fun. I better get the winch ready for this one. Probably the biggest thing that I like to find out before I go into those is what the depth is and what the mud level is. Oh. <laughs> first time wearing a jacket, Grant. <laughs> I think James has got mud. The first trek in the Wombat State Forest was the Easter Monday trek. First obstacle was a series of big bog holes. Yeah, baby! Yes, we did it! We just powered through that big hole, no dramas at all. We've got the big Iveco in place now with the rear winch set up, just in case. Let's see how the rest of the convoy goes. There's a fat chance of me taking the left line through there in the Navara, because the Iveco's on 37s and it was dipping out the whole way through, so... I've got 35s, so I'm probably going to be off the ground. <laughs> None of these big ones. No, otherwise you have to deal with me complaining the whole way home. Three hours of someone complaining. I'm not complaining all the time, he's not a morning person. Every time we came up to one of these bog holes, James closed the vents. What's the problem with the big hole? It smells like poo. He just couldn't land them, mate. He just, the smell of the water, it's obviously been sitting out for a while. We went through a bog hole earlier, 
And the vent, vent was open, so he says, did you fight? I said, no. Come on! So I'm in the middle of the right. Far right! I was feeling around the hole and I knew that with lines there that were not good and I knew I wouldn't get through, so I took a different line and got through it without a problem. What are the thoughts, Bob? The experience with the potholes it was a bit different compared to the other two days. The water was a little bit deeper and everything was a little bit more muddy. Overall, it wasn't too hard. I'm the ninth vehicle in a convoy of ten. Everybody else gets to chew it up really well before I get in there. I was tailing Charlie, so no matter what they did, I was going to get through it. It's been an awesome morning. The weather really just doesn't seem to deteriorate anyone's mood. It makes the drive more challenging, but everybody's still in high spirits. Everybody's really enjoying themselves pulled up on the track, found a flat spot and plenty of room to park 10 vehicles, parked the Rhino next to Mike's truck with the awnings, got them out, we got some cover and stuff like that, and we had a fantastic morning tea. White Rhino pulled out his awning, I got my awning, and feasted into some travel body treats. We got the disco music on, we got Maria from Boss Aluminium, she was doing a bit of a boogie because it was her birthday. We had a bit of a birthday disco, yeah, a bit, a bit of, of a dancing. dance off, yeah. Irish dancing, yep. a bit of like... <laughs> <laughs> Lucky, he has one of our fridges, a Mike Coolman, and we were able to have the cold drinks. That was very rewarding. We're still not quite at this rocky track that I've been told about. Simon's promised us that it's going to be challenging for some vehicles and it's really going to test us. This is my white Rhino, based on the Iveco, the same as Simon's truck. It's set up as an expedition vehicle. It's set up to take me anywhere I want to go in comfort. We've got solar, 200 litres of water, 200 litres of fuel. We've got a pair of treads up on the back here, easy to get to. On the front of it, I've got a heap of Marvic lights. These spotlights are just fantastic for those road driving. And then when you're out really bush off-road, these side lights just give you a beautiful wide spread. So that's my white rhino. Let's get back out on the tracks. The next track we tackled was the Oddy track. Had a look, got out the vehicles, and there was just a long, endless descent going. A lot of rock ledges, step-offs. We just had a bit of rain, so it was a little bit slippery. Got out, walked halfway down. You looked up at the top and you could see the vehicles up there, and you know, the bottom was way down there, and it was steep. Simon went first. He was talking, going, oh, this is awesome, this is great, this is, and then he went quiet and we sort of like went, okay, this is steep, because he stopped talking, so you know something's going on. Oh, oh, yep, she's nice, all right. Sweetie. <laughs> this is a ripper of a hill. As the six-wheel drive has proved time and time again, it is so stable in every situation, and it, it did eat up the track. It was amazing. Even when you, like, really felt like you were going to hit the front window, like <laughs> me, that was pretty scary. Yeah. <laughs> Raptor did great down there, no issues, tyres were awesome. Awesome navigating by Simon, got us down there nice and safe. It was a rough afternoon, he did it with flying colours. Got to the one section and my left front dropped into a hole and I just felt the whole vehicle pitch like this. And it kind of teetered there for a while and eased in the brake and went forward and back to all four tyres on the ground, which was a relief. So the biggest thing on a part like that is not to go too fast because the momentum of the vehicle will slide you into situations where you don't want to be. So just crawl down, first gear, low, and just roll it down slowly, slowly, take your time. Probably got a little bit more ground clearance than some of the other cars, running such a big tyre on an IFS car. I took over the wheel. It was a great experience to be led by Simon, who gave me the signs, go left, go right, follow this. 
and I just concentrated on him and I got down in one piece, yeah. which is very good. Ah, oh, that was absolutely amazing. I couldn't believe it. Just a series of steps, steep, narrow. I was thinking, nah, I'm out. This is a little bit out of my league and I did not want to be explaining to my wife why I parked the rhino on its roof. I must admit, the truck outperforms me considerably. I had Matt from Narva jump in, going down this step, 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 get to the halfway point and Simon goes, all right, you're gonna feel a bit of a bit to the left, a bit to the right. Got the Ranger down, no dramas. I think I was worse for aware by having Matt in the car with me, but you know, he did the right thing. Mark, how different is this looking? This is totally different. It's uh, green and lush and big, tall trees, a whole different area. We had to do a right turn, really sharp, and it was quite a drop off to the right. So if you didn't take the right line, you could really slide into that and do some damage on the side of the vehicle. It was an amazing day driving through all this lush forest with these massive trees. The curving through the forest was a great experience. So we're here, we've got a new driver in the 6x6. We certainly do. Yay, me! Maria took the keys, she takes it in her stride. I was just there giving her guidance that first street crossing ever. The altitude changed significantly, big drop, and so did the vegetation, the climate. It felt like we were in a totally different climate. We could have been up in far north Queensland. It just shows that the terrain in Victoria, as much as everyone talks and raves about the high country, some of these areas out here are not dissimilar. There's actually a gorgeous little spot down there. It's almost big enough to camp at. And then just out the other side, a little bog hole. The new tires on the car really gave me an amazing feeling. Gave me the confidence to just go through. They had such grip. I wasn't really worried about it because it's got the ARV bar and side rails and that'll plow through dirt, no worries. Absolutely amazing, everyone through it, and then by jingo, banging in more soft mud, rots. You're just pressing every button to see if you had a locker, to see if you could get any more traction, but absolutely perfect track. As we came through that really beautiful little forest section, we saw some mine diggings on the right-hand side, so we stopped, went down, had a look. Mine shafts means darkness, so I opened up the back of the Raptor and grabbed out about six or seven torches and handed them out. Mick from White Rhino did actually decide to climb in waist deep into one of them and have a look around. One of the important things to keep in mind is if, if you are going to go exploring off the sides of the tracks, especially in these areas, there are open mines. Be extremely careful because you would just step out, step back to take a photo of your car and you walk back into a mine shaft, so be extremely careful. It's actually pretty interesting to see that guys would have been out here in the middle of nowhere, basically digging holes in the ground, chasing gold, and not having, you know, four-wheel drives and everything to get accessibility to the area. Bit of bush pinstriping through here. Looks like it mustn't get too much traffic. I did notice that there was a lot of overgrown brush, and we knew that that was the point where Dave and White Rhino was going to have some issues. <laughs> when they're scrubbing on the roof of the dual cab, Mick was out there pushing trees and trying to get him through. So far, there's only a little bit of pinstriping. I've actually done pretty well. Even though it's close and tied in, it's quite soft, and so it's not too bad. Baker Bill's track is turning out to be a bit of a doozy. We've got another mud section here on a tight corner for the ruts here. And some roots will throw you around a bit. Everyone knows one bet for one thing, and it's mud. You get into these big mud holes, and you just know it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. It's going to either be a lot of winching or some great driving, or a lot of money spent trying to clean it afterwards. Start turning, accelerating, 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 turn, go, 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 that's it, keep going, keep going, well done. 
plenty of water around this area. If mud's your thing, you'll definitely find some out here. <laughs> it was like opening up a picture book and as you open up the page, you turn another corner, another picture, another bit of scenery. And it was so lovely to see. And it was just off the main road. Amazing. We knew the afternoon was coming to a close and we were going to be heading back to camp. So crucial, we collected some firewood. Everything was just ground wood, so no damage done. Just clean up the area. The amount of wood that's on the ground in, in certain forests, it's just a recipe for disaster when it comes to bushfires. Everybody chipped in, lent a hand, and within no time we had blooded up Simon's truck full of firewood. We were already more or less on the way out, back to the main road. Everyone expected to be back to the camp out within the next 10, 15 minutes. We came across this massive big bog hole. Simon said, oh, I'll have a go first and just see how deep that is. Three options to go, left, right, or straight through the middle. I got told to jump out of the car and come have a look. I heard a whole bunch of, oh, wow, and by the time I got down there, bang, he was bogged, axle deep. I won't be going through that hole. <laughs> no way. It was deep, it was soft. You could see the, the actual hard packed mud pushing up in front of the car. I think he said to me that he was probably a centimetre or two from not being able to open his door. That's how stuck he was. Out comes the winch, out comes the VRS recovery gear, out comes many hands. Found what seemed to be the sturdiest tree, and Simon proceeded to winch out. We are winching! It seemed like he was pulling the majority of all this mud with him. Oh, look at that mud. That was pretty cool to see. Yeah, and none of us wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Simon loves a good bog hole, that's for sure. And he's not worried about getting the Iveco dirty. We decided that every other car should probably go around that one. We just decided to go as far left as we possibly could to avoid any deep water. We got through very easy and safe. White Rhino took the, the left-hand line through what seemed to be quite a shallow bog hole. It, it was a bit deceiving. It looked like it was a lot deeper than it was, but he got through, no worries. And then all of us proceeded to take the smaller track on the side. We didn't want to get the car too dirty, so we, we took the side track. Maria was driving straight around to the other side and all that slippy moving, that undulating axle at the back, airbags kicked in. She made it, no problem. As I came in slowly, then accelerated up through the bog, up out the other side, there was quite a deep hole, so you didn't want to hit that too hard. I got through that just steadily and just eased the throttle going up the incline. It was a bit slippery coming out the other side. However, the vehicle just motored through and it was no real issue. Plain and simple, I showed them what the Ranger could do. I just drove around the side, went through the harder track. Got through it, no problem, got out the other side and said, see Simon, that's how simple it was. That was the finale to the day. It was time to get back onto our campground. drive straight past the pub and then you sort of just drop down a hill and you feel like you're in the middle of the bush. Awesome spot, it's a little bit of a hidden gem. You're away from everyone, it's nice and serene, nice and quiet. It's only about an hour and a half out of Melbourne. All up we've got about 30 powered sites and then we've also got a range of unpowered sites right against the river. Couldn't be a more peaceful, beautiful spot. Attached to the caravan park is the Mineral Springs Reserve. There are actually two mineral springs there and the natural soda water. The water actually comes out of the ground a little bit bubbly in it. And there's some really lovely little walking tracks just around there. It's the ideal place to come and sort of be away from it all. So if you're in the area, drop in and see us and we'll look after you. Day three of our five day adventure was a ripper. And kicking back with mates, 
a raging campfire and a birthday pavlova was the perfect way to celebrate Maria's special day. Make sure you join us again next week for an even tougher day as we hit the tracks out at Mount Cole.